troops, the Jedi of Believe, and you're here in the office of the Always Believe House. Oh, today we're going to do your test review for your test tomorrow, test 4.3. Oh, oh, oh. This will be one of your harder tests, so make sure you go through the video, watch the videos again, and then answer all the problems. Your test review will be for a grade, so make sure you submit this, or if you're face-to-face, -face, turn it in with your test tomorrow. So let's get going, and we're going to do not all of the problems. I'm not going to take all the joy away from you. On the first six problems, remember, you need to do menu, number, ah, let me spell it right, chimney crickets, menu, number, factor. Menu, number, factor, those will give you the prime numbers of your number inside your square root. You'll take out the pairs, the uncircled pairs stay inside, and you multiply them. So, for instance, on number one, we have five outside, but we have 294 inside. So, we need to do menu, number, factor, 294. So, go to your calculator, menu, number, which is two, factor, which is three, and then 294, 294, hit enter, and you get two times three times seven squared. So I'm going to write down 2 times 3 times 7 times 7. So I'm going to go back to here, and I'm going to write 5 square root of 294 over here. Then I'm going to write down 2 times 3 times 7 times 7. I could circle one pair of 7s, right? That 7 goes out, and I'll multiply those outside terms. So I'm going to do 5 times 7, which is 35. 2 and 3 are not circled. I multiply whatever's not circled, and I get this. That's going to be choice C of you. Okay, piece of cake there. So menu number factor, that gives you the prime factors, which is what you got when you did a factor tree in fifth grade. Then you circle the factors that are pairs, take them out, whatever's not, whatever's not circled stays inside. The other way you could do this is just to multiply it on the calculator. So let's go to number five. On the calculator, let's try control X squared. Then type in 63, I need the 3, 63, hit enter, and I get 7.937. I'm just going to do 7.93 and drop. I'm not even going to round. So 7.93. So I'm going to go back here and put 7.93. Now then, I'm going to go through all of the other choices and write down the decimals. So 2 square root of 3, 2, control X squared, 3, too many crickets. Three. Hit enter. 3.46. That's not the same, is it? Now then, if you do it this way, you need to write down those decimals. Let's try C. Three square root of seven. So we're going to go to C. Three square root of seven. Three. Control X squared. Seven. Hit enter. And ding, ding, ding. Notice it's 7.93. 7.93. That one works, doesn't it? So 7.93, the decimals match up, it's going to be C it. So that's another way you could do it. You should be able to do it this way. This is a big skill you're going to need in geometry. You've got to be able to simplify that square root like this. You will not write square roots as decimals anymore. You'll simplify them down to the simplest terms. Just kind of like simplifying a fraction. Let's go to number 7. Anything to the zero power is one. So this zero power goes to all this and it's one. For instance, let's say you have x to the fifth, y to the zero over x squared. The y to the zero right here would go to one and all you would have left is this. You would do x to the five minus two, which would be x three, right? So anything to the zero power will turn into one. Let's go to number nine. If you have an exponent outside of a parenthesis, it's a power to a power you have to distribute. Remember, every term inside, if it doesn't have an exponent, there's a 1. So that 4 goes to here and here. So you're going to do x to the 1 times 4 and y to the negative 4 times 4. You'll get x to the 4th, y to the negative 16. If you have a negative power, it goes to the bottom, don't you? So my answer will be x to the 4th over y to the 16th. 
Try to write all your answers without negative exponents. In Algebra 1, we're trying to simplify without a negative exponent. This right here could be an answer choice on your SAT, though. Both are acceptable. Algebra 1, try to get rid of the negative exponents. Let's go to number 11. You've got to get rid of the parentheses first. So on this one, the parentheses is here. So I'm going to do x to the 5 times 3 times x to the 11. This is going to be x to the 15 times x to the 11. Now I'm just going to add up those exponents, aren't I? And I'm going to get x to the 26. This is a very tr this is going to be one of your hardest tests. There's just so many rules with these exponents. If you look at the numbers, they're, they're one-digit numbers that you're multiplying, adding, and subtracting. Should be okay on this. Let's turn the page and keep going on. Remember, on 14, we want to get rid of the parentheses. The top has a parentheses, doesn't it? So I'm going to take that negative 2 and distribute it. So I'm going to have b3 times negative 2 over b to the negative 13. Then this is going to turn into b to the negative 6 over b to the negative 13. I'm dividing here, so I won't add. I will subtract. You're, you're going to need to punch this right here on, on the calculator. Negative 6 minus a negative 13. That's going to turn into b to the 7th. Ho, 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 ho. F-U-N, fun, fun, fun. Don't know what's more fun than that. Okay, let's go to 15. we got to get rid of the parentheses, right? Remember, anything that doesn't have an exponent has a 1. So that 1 half will go to here, here, and here. So we'll have 196, 1 times 1 half, A, 12 times 1 half, B, 2 times 1 half. Okay, this is going to turn into 196 to the 1 half power, a to the 6th power, b to the 1 power. Now then, remember, the 1 half power is the same as this. So if you were to punch 196 to the 1 half power, or the square root of 196, you would get the same thing. This turns into 14. We have a to the 6th, and we don't put the 1 exponent, do we? So it's just this, 14 a to the 6th b. It's going to be a little bit simpler when you have multiple choice items, this is tricky. So I'm not saying it's not. You've got to just do the problems and get the rules down. When you have a power to a power, you multiply. When you multiply letters together, you add the exponents. When you divide the letters, you subtract the exponents. Let's keep going on. We're almost done. So we have two parentheses, don't we? We've got to get rid of the parentheses. This 5 has a 1 exponent. So that 2 goes twice and the 1 half goes once. So this is going to turn into 5, 1 times 2, a, 4 times 2, a to the 6 times 1 half. Now then simplify that. That's going to turn into 5 squared, a to the 8th, b to the, or I'm sorry, a to the 3rd, right? Now then I'm going to do 5 times 5, which is 25, and then I'm going to add up 8 plus 3 on it, which will be a, a, 11. So 25a to the 11th power would be my answer. Oh, 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 oh. that is just like eating an Oreo cookie. Good stuff. Oh, oh, oh. Let's go to 19. These are probably the hardest ones you have when you have these fractions, especially when there's an exponent to these fractions because there's just so many steps. The first thing I want you to do on a problem like this, imagine the problem without letters. You can punch 21 divided by 28 and get the number. So let's do that. 21 divided by 28, and I get 3 over 4, don't I? So I know my answer better have 3 over 4. Let's look back at the answer choices. This is wrong, isn't it? A is wrong. B has 3 over 4. That part's right. C has 3 over 4. That's right. And so does D. So I know that A is not right because it does not have 3 over 4. So now then, let's go to back to the next step. There's no parentheses on this, so we're just going to do our math. The 21 divided by 28 turns into 3 over 4. Remember, these have a 1 exponent. Then I'm going to do M negative 3 minus 1, N negative 3 minus 1, P 4 minus 2. So this turns into 3 over 4 m to the negative 4, n to the negative 4, p squared. 
the M and the N go to the bottom, don't they? So I'm going to do three fraction bar. The P to the second stays on top. The M goes to the bottom and the N goes to the bottom. So this right here is going to be my answer in it. Ho, 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 ho. F-U-N. Fun, fun, fun. And let's go to the next one. Okay. We know that the area equals the length times the width. Okay, so on this one, my area is 72x7y5 equals, my width is 8x squared y cubed, and I do not know the width. So I need to divide both of these by the 8x squared y cubed. Y'all with me? So on the right-hand side, I'm going to be left with the width, aren't I? Just going to have to divide them. So you're going to punch 72 divided by 8 on the calculator. That's going to be 9. And then you're going to subtract the exponents because we are dividing. So we'll have 9x, 7 minus 2 is 5, and 5 minus 3 is 2. That will be your answer. Ho, 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 ho. And lastly, one more problem. See this on the star many, many times. Write down a equals pi r squared. This is my radius. So this is going to go right in here. And our radius is 7x5y9 squared. You'll be doing this in geometry a lot next year. So you're going to take this 7, that one exponent and distribute it three times. So I'm going to have a equals pi 7 1 times 2 x 5 times 2 y 9 times 2. Okay, now then 7 to the second power is 49. So technically you put your number first. Then we're going to put the pi, and then 5 times 2 is 10, and 9 times 2 is 18. This right here would be your answer. It's going to be real funky next year in geometry because you will not replace pi with 3.14. You'll just leave pi as pi. You won't. It's kind of easier because you don't have to multiply with a decimal. So this is kind of the first time you've left pi in your answer. You'll do that all the time in geometry. You're going to do good on your test tomorrow. Remember to always believe in yourself. You're going to do really good on the test. Keep believing in yourself. Remember, you are amazing. You are created to do wonderful things. And you are awesome.